everybody, I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to show you step by step how to create this very easy watercolor landscape of a sunset with a pine tree silhouette. I'm just using round brushes. It's really simple colors. You can do exchanges for this project and still get a very good result. So it's very beginner and new artist friendly. On the mic is my husband, John. Hello. He's going to make sure that as I explain the techniques, colors, or steps, that you can really see what I'm demonstrating and talking about by pointing one of our mini robotic cameras at it. Um, if you are here for the premiere, be sure to put your questions all in caps. That way myself or the moderators can help you find your resources or make sure you get anything that you need because that's, that's why I'm here. I'm here to help you. I'm here to help you learn how to paint. So get those paints, get those brushes, come back. And I'm going to show you how you really genuinely can paint this picture. So today I am on a 9 by 12 pad of Fabriano watercolor paper, 140 pound cold press. Now this is a watercolor block, which means all the sheets of the pad are glued together, but for a corner. I have taken low tack tape, uh, that's like a painter's tape, and painted the edges so that I have room for framing. I'm doing this now because you guys are framing your art. Yeah. So now I got to make sure that we leave edges for the framers. <laughs> <laughs> which is like, that's a good thing. I'm glad you guys are feeling that good about your paintings. Um, so I have that down. I'm going to be telling you the colors as I'm going so that you know what I'm using. You can always check the materials below. Remember, you've got a traceable. If freehanding any element of this seems daunting, and you can use that to help guide you. But I actually think this is going to be one of those that we can kind of just do together, John. Yeah. All right. You ready to give them step one? So in step one, I am going to take a, a wash brush. This is a very fancy wash brush. It is a soft aqua by Raphael imitation squirrel brush. Um, and it just means I didn't use any animals in the making of this. Well, they didn't. And then I purchased it. So no animals, <laughs> imitation squirrels, no real squirrels. And But it works incredibly well. So if you're looking for a vegan alternative, this is a great one. But any wash brush will do. I'm going to get my wash brush wet with water. And I'm going to paint my entire sheet of paper with a coat of water. Now, the trick to this is, especially if you're new, is getting the right amount of water on the paper and telling how to tell like it's the right amount of wet is really hard <laughs> when you're new. One of the reasons that 100% cotton can be nice is that it holds the water a little longer than other papers that just have, you know, a coating on them. And it can work really well. Now, what we're looking for, and I'll see if I can tip it, is can you kind of see the shine? Yeah. You want paper that isn't like running, like I'm tipping it and it's not sheets of water running. Um, but there's a shine to it so that um, you know you have enough on there. Now, I'm going to just grab a regular round brush. This is a number 16. You could use a number 14. You could use a number 18 on this line. It's the Raphael Soft Aqua Rounds any round that you have that's about this big in relationship to a finger. And honestly, it could be bigger or smaller. So there's a lot of flexibility in this stage. I'm going to go ahead and start with some yellow. And I'm going to load up some nickel ozo yellow. And I'm going to come down to the lower third. So I'm going to take yellow and I'm going to put it at the bottom. I'm going to be making kind of loose, almost curved strokes here. I'm creating this little sky effect. And I want just a little bit of a glow down low. A little Ooh. bit of a glow down low, right? That's good. That's what we're looking for is a little bit of a glow. As I'm coming up, I'm going to get some quinacridone magenta. And you see that right here? And I might add a little bit of yellow to that. That's a Hansa yellow. And I'm going to work this in. Remember that the watercolor absolutely dries lighter than you put it down. Right. So that's the color shift of watercolor is that it lightens up as it dries. Notice I'm kind of weaving these in like a little mini stroke, like little bit in there. Because we've got the trees, you know, that we know are going to be coming up, I'm going to go ahead and make sure that this color goes down, you know, maybe a little bit further just so that it's. This is the uh, nickel ozo yellow, just so that it's very integrated through the branches. 
right? Notice that I'm just adding a little bit, a little yellow there. I'm letting everything sort of bloom and travel as it wants. I'm getting just pure quinacridone now. Isn't that lovely? So this was quinacridone with a little bit of the yellow, but now I'm adding a bit of the quinacridone. Just, oh, I grabbed some red by accident. So we're going to take some pyrrole red and quinacridone magenta, and that's actually lovely, so I'm glad it happened. That would be the full definition of something unexpected happening that um, is to your benefit. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and take my pyrrole red and my quinacridone magenta together. Squeaky chair. Is it squeaky chair? And I'm really trying to make sure that this is, you know, pigmented heavily. I'm allowing it to sort of blend and bloom and travel. I'm not trying to work against its natural um, journey. I'm going to go ahead and take some ultramarine blue and quinacridone magenta and make kind of a dark purple. See how we're doing? You could just have purple watercolor and that would be fine if you were using the pan watercolors and you wanted to just have purple and not mix it. You could do that. Bringing this from the edges. Bring a little bit of the dark color down. And that's just, you know, sometimes it's hard to get the color just dark enough so that when it dries, it's not too light. Because you really want it to be vibrant. Yeah. And that can be, uh, if you're using inexpensive paint, it can have a lot of fillers in it, a lot of chalk, and that can desaturate your paint. Um, not every economic com company does that, but that can be a problem that you commonly run into with economy watercolors. Because hmm. um, that's how they save their money. I'm adding a little bit of dark and look, I'm just wiggling the brush through, making maybe some, oh gosh, little bits of dark clouds, right? It's super pretty. Isn't it just lovely? I think it's just lovely. Make a bit. I'm just taking the brush and I'm sort of wiggling. Look, I'm just wiggling the toe. I'm not drawing little circles. And I'm painting a very irregular shape because clouds... Make very irregular shapes. Make a little wiggle there. I'm breaking the lines between them. That helps them feel real. You don't have to do too much of that, but you'll want to do some. I'm going to get a lot more of my ultramarine blue on here and kind of add some of that dimensionality. This is a really fun stage because the paper is damp. It's starting to dry, but you can see the, the buckling. Yeah. Um, and that's what the pads are so terrific for because... As the paper dries, it restretches it, you know, and that's really great. And if you can allow your paper to dry on the pad, really rinse out this brush quite well, and just allow it to completely rest and do what it's going to do, you're going to be so much happier with the result. So let's let this paper dry completely before the next step. And, and you know, try to be patient. Try Try to allow it to dry on its own and not accelerate in some way. It's just a great time to go do some self-care or start another painting. Sometimes I do two or three watercolors at the same time so that I can allow one to fully dry while I work on another one. That's uh, my big strategy because I'm impatient coming from acrylic. I want everything to be now, 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 now. <laughs> Isn't this a crazy first step? I don't know that there's steps in this one as much as there should be. This is great. But that's the step. I'll see you back for the next part. So I am using a number 12 Escoda. You could use the same round brush. You can use a different round brush. You can change any of your favorite brushes for this next part. But this is what I'm using. And I'm doing it because it has a very sharp point so that will help me do the technique. But the first thing that I'm going to want to do is to make like an angular hill to put my trees on. And I'm going to want to paint it in pretty wet and then come in and work my trees before it dries. So we're going to break those two steps up. But keep in mind that you're going to want to do them both in the wet and wet technique. How I'm going to go ahead and paint this one side in, I'm going to go get my brush very wet with Payne's Gray. 
and a heavy load of pigment. And I'm really loading that pigment. I'm going to come from the right hand side and on the toe of my brush. I'm going to go ahead and just take a hill off the side. Now I'm going to need to paint this out and I do want it to be fairly wet because I don't want it to dry on me before I can do the trees. This is all in. And again, I want it to be fairly wet. You could use a wash brush, any brush you wanted to, to get this in. I'm just going to use this brush because I'm going to be working it with the trees. I'm going to make sure there's just tons and tons of pigment on here. Right? Tons and tons. So I'm not just loading water onto here, I'm loading pigment. And the trick will be I've got to keep this space, especially here at this edge, a little bit wetter. So I'm making sure that that's a little bit wetter. And I'll just make sure it's pretty dark through here and painting right over the paper. All right, we're gonna call this a step. And before this dries, we're gonna come back and start putting in trees like little tree fiends. So it's wet, we're moving pretty quickly. I'm gonna take my brush and I'm gonna come over from the side and I'm going to start up top right here, you know, a few inches from the bottom and I'm gonna make the beginning of a tree. I'm gonna tap my brush up and down and then I'm going to go ahead and put up, pull out little brush strokes that are gonna represent this little pine tree coming down. Now, many of you might have done pine trees using a fan brush right and that's really fun and you could do that here if you had a fan brush for watercolor but what we're going to do is we're going to make a nice little detailed out and a little conifer so i'll bring a little branch out and go around and so i am doing detail and i may have to come back and just make sure that this stays wet as i go it's a little juggle can you see how we're juggling all right so we're going to be juggling 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 as the tree comes down, it will be a little bit, you know, say, thicker, you know, and the width of the branch is coming out, but it can be broken up, right? Doesn't all have to be the same going down. Sometimes these trees are just solid all the way through. Sometimes they show a little bit of trunk. Any of that is fine. Now I'm connecting it with the hill. We bring a little branch out here, kind of detail it out. See how that's got a little detail? There we go, detailing that out. What do you think? I like it. I like it too. Make sure that this is staying wet. It's dry on me. Let's make a little friend here. This time I'm gonna bring a little stroke up from the bottom and that's because i'm going to want to show maybe a little bit of trunk right and i'm going to add a second one here and it's really interesting how it's going to, going to kind of bend into the first so i've got that i will do the same ops that i did before you can even raise that up a little bit Give it lots of personality sometimes and I don't know if you've got to do the uh, conifers in watercolor with me where we did the two trunked tree this is sort of a tribute to that because sometimes these trees have more than one trunk So one of the things that you can always do, and I'm just on the toe here, brushing out little branches. It's not too dissimilar from, say, doing a palm tree. We're getting those kind of there. And that just kind of creates its own little interest, doesn't it? Just a, a, a little more interesting than just the row of pine trees. Yeah.
Just bringing it here. There we go. Just bringing it down. And you can see that those two join in. And so that's a very nice little row. Very interesting. So even if we do just traditional stuff, and I'm going to bring my pigment here, just making sure that it's it's pigmented, right? Yeah. It's not drying on us, and these are blending in well together. I'll come back up and do a tree from the top again. It's a very shiny brush. It is a very shiny brush. I hadn't thought about how hard that would be to film. <laughs> it's not hard to film. Oh, it's okay. Just, just very. I think it's very. It's a, it's a nice little travel brush. That's why it's shiny. It's got this big handle, but I just really like its tip uh, very much. And so sometimes I find that I will grab it when I'm doing something like this. And see, just painting little. Little trees coming down. Keeping that pigment load wet in there. Just because we're painting a silhouette doesn't mean it has to be, you know, interesting or repetitive and visually boring. It can be a bunch of different things. giving myself a trunk there and see what's great is you get these in and then you can fill in with other little bits making sure that these are you know kind of blending up into each other while they're all still wet so you can see what I'm talking about I'm just trying to prevent that little line working this fairly quickly little downward brush strokes one goes out and then down, 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 I look out. You get that down and right into the mountain. And then once I have that, right, I'm not planting them on um, just um, regular ground. So I might put up a little tree here. Okay, so this then starts to become the tops of a tree line that we're looking at. And then once we have these in, it's really easy to fill in and still keep uh, interesting negative spaces. I'm just bringing that down there. Notice that I'm making sure that my branches don't fill in every hole. Just up here at the top, bringing that down. Pretty good. We're nearly done. It's looking really cool. So some of these are, you know, just the tops, and some of these are just bigger conifers, and so that's why we're able to kind of do this effect. We have a very intricate, involved line. It up a little bit here. And it's those little openings in the sunlight that really, I think, pull it together for me. Yeah, that's really cool. And then maybe just put one right here. So it's not even quite part of this other group. All right. So there we've got that little conifer line there. And the last little thing that we can do, which I think is a lot of fun, is I'm going to take this and I'm going to come up top. And I'm going to do kind of a little thin stroke. I'm going to bring it up, pull it down, bring it up, and drag it out. Maybe give it a little bird head there. 
right? I'm right here. Making that little M. It's kind of, you might remember this sort of the idea, this a little bit from perhaps uh, grade school, right? This is just a little more, maybe a little bird body there, and a little tail coming off. So the silhouettes are just a little more bird is all it is. And then, you know, you can do the kind you think of uh, in the distance, perhaps back there. And let's do another shocking little one right here. This time I'm going to take the wing up. So sometimes the wings being up or the wings being down is a uh, real key. Exaggerate what would be wing in the head. There we go. Got my hand in the paint so I get it. Fix that right back up. Doesn't that look wonderful? All right. really does so what i probably will do for signature is when it's all dry i'll probably come in and sign it with a white paint pen or a jelly pen or something that will go over the black because i don't want to sign over here so that's uh or a metallic pen just something fun normally we don't traditionally do that but when this is dry i'm totally going to do that when i come back i'm going to tell you i'm going to show you signing it with the metallic pen and tell you what you're going to do next so I'm going to take some Edding pens. I really like these pens. They're a metallic pen. I have like a bazillion sets of them. I'm going to pick a color that I like from my painting, and I think I'll pick purple. And I'm going to come here in the corner and go ahead and give that a sign. I like these pens because they write on a lot of things, and they're highly pigmented, and they hold up pretty well, actually. Yeah. So I even sign certificates and things with these. And it's like, it's not... I like the purple because the signature is there, it's visible, but it's not visually a distraction. The next thing that you're gonna do is you're gonna pull off the paper. This painting is completely dry. And I suggest saving these sheets of tape because you can use them again on at least, I, I really use them pretty easily three, four times. Um, I like where it's wet here, I would like flip it over and then flip it. And that's, the stick seems to work, you know, three, four times. I'm gonna peel this off. You kind of go the opposite that you put them down. All right, so save your tape. And this really allows you to frame easier. It gives your framer a lot of room. It gives you a lot of room with mats and everything. It's okay for a little bit of the white on the paper to show on a watercolor. And it just makes it easier since you guys are framing your stuff. I wanted to make sure that I show you how to prepare for that. Oh my goodness, John, do you love it? I love it. So, uh, you know, I know you guys are seeing watercolors come up all the time. You might see me in this outfit a few times because I, I remember how I said sometimes I do a bunch of paintings in a setting. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do a bit of that to help you guys get more watercolor content. Um, content. I hate calling content. It's just beginner-friendly art lessons. That's what I... <laughs> I don't make content. I make beginner-friendly art lessons on a platform that wants content. So... That's what's going on there. But I hope you like some of these entry-level landscapes as an introduction to it. Remember, I'm going to tell you the tools I'm using. I'm going to tell you the materials. You can find everything in the description below, but you can still use what you have. The first thing I recommend upgrading, of course, is paper. Paper makes such a big difference. Uh, then your paint and then your brushes. And remember, you can spend pretty much whatever your budget allows on a watercolor brush because they last forever. No, they don't. Mm-hmm. Yes. Pretty much nearly forever. Yeah, they're amazing. Like with good brush care, they they go a long, long time. All right. Now, here's the important thing. I want you to do a lot of paintings. Make a lot of time for yourself creatively. Be good to yourself and kind to your heart. Be good to each other because that's how we make the world a better place. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye.